Good morning or afternoon or whatever time it is where you're watching. My name is Fred Jensen and I'm the product manager for PowerLog and I'm going to discuss uh, Python extensions in PowerLog 971. Now PowerLog 971 is our newest version of PowerLog and I must say we're very excited about it. It is without a doubt the most uh, revolutionary version of PowerLog we've ever released and, and we're really proud of the effort the development team and everyone put into it. And in this one I'm going to talk about Python extensions. Now Python extensions are a way of going in and writing Python programs to supplement your PowerLog computations. Uh, we have a lot of stuff you can do in PowerLog but petrophysicists and engineers and geophysicists sometimes like to write their own things and so Python extensions are a new way to do it. So let's just take a look at the extension. And the first thing is to look at the Extensions Explorer. And the Extensions Explorer is, is kind of how you get started with Python extensions. The first thing you do is you set up your settings file. And the settings file goes in and it says where you're going to put your Python scripts, uh, your programs, as it were. So we're going to put them in D Extensions Workspace. And that's just where we're going to save them. You can put them anywhere you'd like on your system. The second thing that you have to specify is where is your path to the Python distribution that you're going to use. Uh, Python distribution is a collection of, uh, first of all, a version of Python that you're running, plus all of the tools, utilities, libraries, uh, modules that you want to associate with that Python. Now, one of the neat things about PowerLog's Python extensions is you can use the uh, distribution that we provide, which we call PLPy distribution, or which is right here, or you can use whatever distribution you have in your office. If you're already running 3.6, Python 3.6, and you have an Anaconda distribution, then you can run that. And you just point to the distribution, and then here's the real guts of the program is PL Connect. And if you go to the PL Connect and tell it where PL Connect is, then you can connect your Python with PowerLog. And that connection then will happen and then your Python is connected to PowerLog. And then we have a server that we're running and it, the server is the PL Connect server and it connects to, to the uh, PowerLog database and all the information that's available in PowerLog. So we have a bunch of extensions we've already written new consoles, you can edit properties, and all sorts of functions in here. So we're going to write a new processor, and we're going to call it demo. So I'll know to get rid of it later, is for a demo. And I say, OK. And demo appears, and also a demo.py shows up in my workspace. And this is, this is the way you start. Now, I might want to go to the demo first and say, I want to edit the properties of the demo. And so first off, it's, it tells you the file name. It's a processor. It's for a demo. And it, some other characteristics. It shows in menu. And this is where you can put it in the menu. And, and it'll display as if it were a PowerLog module. We're not going to do that with this one. And then parameters. What parameters do we want to put in this particular utility? Well, let's put in a few parameters. Let's put in row, let's make a caps lock, row B, and row B is a density, and the variable type. This is very important because you can put in a curve, a Boolean, an integer, a double, a string, a choice list, a file, or a folder. And that, that versatility is what really makes this, this a, a powerful tool. But we're going to go with a curve, and the default is going to be row B. And it's not an output curve. The units are grams per cc, and it's an input curve. And the category merely helps it builds the GUI that we're going to be building, and it makes the GUI look better, makes it more presentable. And so let's go ahead and add another curve. And let's add the neutron. Uh, and the neutron is a neutron curve. It's a curve type. 
and the default will be MPHI, and its units are decimal. And it too is an input curve. And then we're going to do a new curve called sum, and it's going to be the sum. And it's going to be a curve, and its default is going to be sum, and it's unitless, and it's going to be an output. Curve. And so now we've defined two input curves and an output curve, and we say, okay, and we're going. Now, one of the interesting things about this well is I don't have a row B curve. I have a ZDIN curve, and we'll show you how to come, we'll work with that here in a minute. So now I want to go into my Python thing and say, okay, I want to edit my Python script. So now i got to have a, a, an editing interface or tool or whatever you want to call it and I use spider and once again this is where power log is really cool it allows you to use whatever you want and I like spider some people like notepad plus plus some people like some QT stuff I don't know it depends on what you want to use so here's what we have here this is the key it says from PL connect processing import so it's going to bring everything that you specified when you were building that, that Python program or that extension into PowerLog. And so now we want to we want to sum them. So we say data dot sum is equal to data dot row B times data dot NPHI. And that's it. Because what we said was that all of our info curve data is going to have the front ends of data, and then we save it. And now we go back to our Python script. We double-click it, and you see we get a GUI. And you see it's built pretty. It's got inputs and outputs. Hmm. I need to check something here. I did not specify it was an output. Now I specified it's an output. Now I go back to demo. Ah, and it's fixed. And that's an example of how interactive it is. It, it does it immediately. Well, I, I know I don't have a row B curve. I actually have a ZDEN curve. And I'm going to run it. Now notice that we have, if you're familiar with PowerLog, this is the same uh, interval widget that we have on all of our applications. It's a multi-well application. You can run it on as many wells as you want. Um, and we're running it externally. So I'll go ahead and run it. And it appears to have worked. Uh, I can check my console, and it worked. The console would provide the error messages if things didn't work. I can go into my program. So I can view the raw data. And then here is what you get when you multiply your bulk density times your neutron. And that's it. That's how easy it is to build and develop these Python programs. Now, I pointed out you can use whatever you'd like here, and that's true. We give you the option of using any interface you want. So now I'm going to go show an example of some of the other stuff that we built. Here's a 3D cross plot. You might want to take a look at this. In this case, we're going to do the same well. We're going to use rho B density neutron. We're going to apply it, and you get a 3D cross plot, which you can make as big as you want. You can rotate it. You can view it from other, any angle. And you can exit it. Now we'll go back into Spider real quickly and show what that 3D cross plot program looks like. And once again, we get it here. We drag it, we move, move it, we drop it. And there, that is the entire thing. And that's one of the real powers of, of, of Python, is that we give you all the tools, the matplotlib, and all of the tools you need to go in and build these viewers very quickly and easily. It's really an amazing tool. Now, we also, I'm going to show one more Python extension just to give an example of what it does. And I'm going to show the single well path. 
And this one is a little bit more complicated. And I don't want to show it on the Jurassic 2. I actually want to show it on the Faces Log 3. Add. OK. Apply. This is going to take a little longer to run because it's a little more sophisticated. I did something wrong in here because my color bar is not working. So the question is, do I have a gamma ray curve? And the answer is no. That's annoying. So let's go ahead and put in gamma ray C. Oops. And run it again. And I may want to put some tops. I want to use a tops list. So let's add some, some tops. Let's add major tops. And now what I do is I get the deviated well path with the color by gamma ray and all the major tops showing. And this is just another example of the kind of viewers you can easily build in PowerLog with Python extensions. So thank you for your time and attention. <laughs>